Welcome back to the Win With Dice podcast, a podcast featuring members of the Win With Dice team. I'm Calvin, and I'm joined here by Ramon. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm a, I'm a small cowboy mouse detective, not detective. <laughs> <laughs> lawyer. lawyer. <laughs> deputy. <laughs> Man of the times. <laughs> <laughs> we... <laughs> If, if, if we seem a little giggly, it's because we're coming just fresh off. Uh, we just finished a session like 10 minutes ago uh, that featured a very interesting um, very interesting use of a wizard familiar. One that uh, I was not aware that you uh, were capable of doing. But uh... Well, neither did I until this very moment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, which will we, spoilers? I guess we'll get into later in the uh, into the um, the podcast. Um, but uh, it's it was fun and kind of nutty, and I'm I'm so excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of fun and kind of nutty, this podcast uh, this podcast, of course, is all about tabletop RPGs, sort of uh, playing them, running them, and our kind of insights on our experiences when it comes to being in games or running games and. You know, helping to communicate those things to hopefully make the other side of the screen a bit less mysterious, uh, a bit easier to want to hop onto the other side of. So, of course, if you want to hear more of that kind of thing, just subscribe to the channel and hit that uh, hit that bell button. Uh, if you have any specific questions in regards to running tabletop RPG games, uh, be sure to drop them in the comments below. We'll try to get to them and maybe make an episode out of them um, if we can do something like that. And of course, we're on the social medias, Twitter and Facebook, uh, and our website, WomenFlice.ca. Um, that's all the upfront professional stuff. So let's <laughs> <laughs> let's start getting into, I guess, the meat of the show. Uh, but before we do, we have to get into the appetizer uh, of the show. Yes. The Win With we Dice to... Weekly DM Tip <laughs> of the Week. Oh, guys, the Win With Dice Weekly DM Tip of the Week uh, brought to you by Vermont. <laughs> oh, God. Do we need a theme song for the Weekly DM Tip of the Week now? Is that, is that where I we're mean, at? Maybe. <laughs> I feel like I deserve it, but that's okay. Oh, of course. Uh, uh, if, future, if, if you are listening to this and you heard some music sting or something, that means future Calvin went through the effort. Uh, if you don't hear that, that means future Calvin was like, no, I'm not doing that. So I don't know. We'll see how future Calvin yeah. feels. Future Calvin, if you don't do it, the, the comments will reprimand you, I'm pretty sure. They will. They'll be so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Even further well, in the future, uh, Calvin will reprimand future Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so um, for the tip of the week uh, this week, uh, I'm going to uh, say that, you know, uh, let your players um, have a lot of input in your game. I mean, honestly, uh, I've, I've, I, they, they just have better ideas than you sometimes, and sometimes you just gotta listen to them. <laughs> like, I think that everyone at the table is very creative. I know a lot of my players have invented whole, like, major plot lines just on their own <laughs> at my table. And so if, if, you're, if you're feeling like you're a little overwhelmed as a DM and you're like, oh man, I don't really know where to go or you know i really know how to uh describe this uh, scenario or situation or object or whatever just be like ask your players be like you know what what does your little mouse uh, uh <laughs> familiar sound like right <laughs> why don't you act it out <laughs> yeah of course um i would yeah that's actually a good point because i was just thinking um part of your map uh at least like at the time i was playing that was just made by the players um, that one region we were going to, I think Lahurst or something it was called. Uh, at yeah, first it was just yeah. made by the players. We had just, they had just like drawn it up was, a map. It was literally on just like a cue card. Uh, I handed a cue card to one of my players and he just went off and drew this lake and these couple towns. And as I was describing it, because I'm, I'm not very good at maps. So I just kind of have everything, you know, nebulous days away. And that's how I keep track. Like this town is this many days away from this town and this town's further than that. So it's this many days from this town. And that's how I do my math. Right. right. But then he just decided to take it on himself to draw it out. And then I actually took that map and um, added it um, into like a world map that I was working on in um, Incarnate. So, you know, uh, 
and I had to jam pack a bunch of stuff in it because you know my, my players were like I'm from this forest and it's called my name's forest like the rain's forest or rain's forest yeah rainforest I don't know yeah so you know or like oh is that why you know, your name is a small town <laughs> yeah yeah that's why that forest is called the rainforest and her name is rain so yeah that's why rain is has to go back to the rainforest uh, of course <laughs> good old good old jokes like that <laughs> but you know that was significant and um you know inventing npcs inventing descriptions of stuff like you know i think it's it's uh players uh should have as much impact onto your game as you know as as you are creating it because you know you're all doing this together i mean yeah exactly <laughs> that's that's a that's a damn tip of the week take some pressure off yourself yeah give it to your players yeah let the players yeah i mean at the end of the day there's more than there are of you so odds are they've got some good ideas brewing over there <laughs> yeah man like Dude, that's like what one of you and four of them. That's like four times the amount of brains. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a giga brain. Like, there's no way I'm gonna beat four brains at something. Like, <laughs> exactly. But so I, yeah, just don't don't I, feel um don't feel restricted in that. Don't feel like you have to take on the responsibility of everything, because you're the GM. So everything that happens has to be on your shoulders. Yeah. No, man. You're just there to make all the funny voices and. You know, do the dance, but they're there to to steer, help steer the ship sometimes. Exactly. Cool. Okay. Um, and with that uh, weekly tip of the week, we can get into the uh, the main topic of the show, which is a game that we are uh, just coming off of. Uh, I'm still drying my eyes from laughing so hard at that last part. So um, I guess let's get into the, descri- the description of the game. Uh, this, of course, is a continuation of the Lost Mine of Fandelver campaign that our friend Tim was running. Uh, Tim's been on the show. Uh, we interviewed him for an episode uh, 20 something I think it was. Uh, I don't know. 20 episodes ago? <laughs> Holy shit. I think so. I don't know. I might be entirely wrong. I want to say it was 27. Well, I mean, okay. But okay. I don't know. Don't trust me. Go to the playlist and see what episode it is. Or we'll have it linked well, below. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, Lost Mind of Tim Tim Delver is what I call the campaign. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because we have so right. thoroughly. I mean, like, I don't know how much we've changed it, but I feel like we've, I feel like we've had some significant impacts on the plot of this, of this campaign. <laughs> I mean, I hope so. I mean, it's getting kind of ridiculous over there. But yeah, so we we picked off, uh, picked off, picked up, um, back uh, with. Uh, stealth team, which is <laughs> comprised of Teagues, which is your character, Calvin, yeah. uh, a, a druid, and um, Bren, uh, which is um, our friend Chibi's character, and um, uh, Thalum. Thalum. Thalum hasn't been around long enough for me to remember Thalum's <laughs> name. Not that it's bad, I just, I'm bad at names. <laughs> so it's like committing shit to memory is hard for me yeah. uh Cal- calvin can account he always asks me what the, what is this person's name and it's like man like don't do this to me <laughs> that's why that's specifically why i do that to you <laughs> oh my god that's why we have like smitherax the dragon because oh man you jabroni you jabroni is <laughs> named the, 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 the most evilest dragon smitherax <laughs> i forgot that because I was bad at names. Oh, I still remember it's like a town that was called New Shoot. Because we asked the name of the town, and you were just like, oh, uh, shoot. And I was like, New Shoot, <laughs> New shoot happened yeah. somehow. New, new um, shoot. And then we got attacked by like a griffin or whatever, which I feel like was vengeance for that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, you know, Stealth Team go is is on their way to... Uh, to beat up some orcs in a cave for a necromancer to tell the necromancer to get off their land Asse- or, like, get back there well <laughs> essentially yeah so last uh, last time we played uh, uh, a few people like the few people who were there uh, Teeks, Bren, and Thalem, Uh we had met up with this uh, necromancer wizard uh, by the name of Haman Kost who had sort of taken up residence in the ruins of a tower uh, unfortunately, that happened to include a nearby well that the people in the local town needed. So they had hired us to go out there and sort of uh, get like free up the well for them because people were going there and getting attacked by undead. So we headed down there. We found the source of the undead was this wizard who was doing some archaeology in the ruins of the tower. Uh, he did say that there were a few things he wanted um, as well as information from the ruins. He wanted something from a banshee nearby, 
uh, some information from her, which is another thing that some other people also wanted. So there's a couple people who want something from that banshee. Um, as well, there were some orcs nearby, which the town had also asked us to deal with. So yeah, we were since we were just out so far away from the small town, we were just gonna you know check out the orc situation. And originally, I thought we were just gonna scout it out uh, to see what we're dealing with, and then try to figure out like some sort of actual plan for facing them. So, you know, we patched up a bit from the battle. Uh, somehow I was the most hurt, uh, I guess because I always am. <laughs> um, and then we started just traveling on. Um, so as we were walking, Bren started singing, which was which was great. Uh, he rolled like a okay-ish uh, check on that. So it was kind of like off key and stuff. But then Phalum joined in uh, with a sea shanty. <laughs> I was like, um, that really got Teeks's interest, but she didn't join in. I don't know. I kind of wish. I kind of wish she had, but I mean, I don't know. I'll say from her character's character perspective, maybe she wishes she had. But I mean, we were on the trail of like looking for orcs, and they, these two were just out like singing out in the open. So it's like, yo, come on. That's <laughs> not very to be stealthy. Stealth team. <laughs> exactly. To be stealth we, we are the stealth team. <laughs> So our travels took us to a place called Wyvern Tor, uh, which about a century or so ago used to be a resting area for wyverns, but was mostly just used as like hideaways and stuff since that point. And we had seen some smoke off in the distance over like a ridge. Uh, so, you know, we took a, we took a bit of a longer path to get there, not wanting to walk up to it directly. Uh, but what we saw was a cave mouth. And from there we could see there was an orc nearby who was sort of like hunkered down near the mouth of this cave, who was about 30 feet away. Uh, and this was the first fun part of the session, because we um, <laughs> we met this orc, and you know, he's just he's just like a random orc just guarding the cave. Obviously his friends are in the cave. Uh, but what I had done uh, in preparation for this day, because I was like, if we're out there scouting, we might run into something and we might need to get away from it. If it's gonna be an orc, maybe I'll prepare a charm spell. So, I don't know, they'll be friendly towards us and probably not, like, run us through with their orc swords or whatever they have. So, you know, <laughs> the, the orc was just close enough for me to do the charm spell. So I went up, I, I charmed him, and then uh, I went down there and I started talking to this orc. And I I guess Teeks just immediately felt some sort of pity for him. Because he was, because, um... I mean, at first it was just interrogation of, like, hey, how many of your friends are inside? Well, actually, no, she did say... Uh, how many people are, are in your tribe, uh, which came back to bite me. The literal wording of that came back to bite me later in the session. Uh, wow. But she was just trying to get a sense of like what was in, what was going on in there, are there any traps or anything like that. Uh, and then she stopped to ask the orc's name before she left, and the orc said that he didn't have a name, that he had to earn one, and he was being disrespected by the tribe, and he just wanted the leader to recognize him just to get some appreciation. And I don't know, man. I don't know what emotions took over me and therefore Teeks <laughs> at that moment. Calvin, it's just, just he's just a sad boy. Like you're just it's just like you just what happens, man. You have like a sad, lonely boy, and you're like, let me take care of you. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. My one weakness. <laughs> <laughs> so Teeks decided um, to give the organ name. And I was like, um, because then I put myself in a position where I should come up with a name. <laughs> uh, but I ended up just giving him the name Wyvern because we were at we were in Wyvern Tor. It was a cave where Wyverns hang out. So she gave him the name Wyvern, uh, and then he gave her a hug. <laughs> and then Tim made me roll a fortitude save, and I ended up taking <laughs> wow. one damage from the hug. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which just, you know, just made him even more endearing. So at that point, Teeks was trying to get this guy to go away before they started fighting the rest of the orcs because we were strategizing um, before you and Cory arrived, before you two characters arrived. We were strategizing and we were going to try to like kite the orcs out of the cave just to sort of like funnel them out of a tighter space and try to fight them there instead of going into the cave. So Teeks was trying to get rid of Wyvern for a bit. So she was saying, hey, if you go into the forest, maybe you'll be able to find some sort of enhancements and stuff for your armor, like animal skulls and stuff like that. And he ended up looking, he ended up going out looking for an owlbear skull. 
and <laughs> Teague was like, okay, cool. Uh, he'll go do that, and then he won't be here when we kill all these orcs. Oh, man, at a side note, I just think it's really funny that you're like, yeah, okay, man, you go try and kill an owlbell, bro. He's just like a level one, like, mook orc. Like, in all honesty, like, you can't you can't fight an owlbear. <laughs> like, you can't. <laughs> and we chalked it up to, to Teague's. Because Tiggs is a, a an aquatic druid, right? Yeah. Like she's she's from the sea, right? Yeah. So like, you know, she doesn't know what forest animals are all about. So you know, you know, how like a so instead of like you hear owl bear, she probably thought like, oh yeah, it's like an owl with a bear's head, right? Like small, <laughs> like an owl. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> but it's like, but it's no, it's the opposite. It's like a it's like a, a bear, bear with an owl's head. With an, <laughs> with an owl's head. That's what it like is. way scarier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because at the time, like I Calvin didn't realize oh there's a significant level difference between the two i was just like yeah he's just gonna go fight one single owl bear, like, owl bear. how hard can it be um oh, birds are so scary <laughs> like they're legitimately so scary <laughs> not fun an owl bear right now like an owl an owl bear would mess us all up <laughs> like it could be like somebody's gonna get disemboweled <laughs> like <laughs> well i had the utmost faith in him so he went off into the forest very excitedly waving his weapon around saying i'm coming for you owl bear and he ran off into the <laughs> distance and i was like great now he's got to deal with this so you know we we're making our plans uh our plan was to go in there and s just like see what we're dealing with uh if things if things got too heavy we would keep the um exit of the cave to our back so we could just like bail out because it was just the three of us until <laughs> so that that's the moment where you and Corey uh, were signed signed on and arrived so so Cavo uh with uh, to your suggestion that you gave to Ted Cavo um since he he was a miner he was off prospecting during the session that he wasn't there for uh so it took up like a few days of time he um he burst up out of the ground like in Minecraft he like he he dug up <laughs> out of the ground into the cave that we were just in. Um, <laughs> Ren almost gave him a kick that uh, didn't do any damage. We were all surprised by him just exploding out of the ground. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, his, his name's Kavo. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. I don't know. It, it was just like a spur of the moment. I was like, that would be hilarious because, uh, you know, I, I didn't realize that Corey was actually missing from the last session, too. Like, I, didn't, I don't know why I, I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I love the fact that he's just, like, around in the mountains, just kind of digging around. And then his character just be like, oh, hey, guys. <laughs> so I didn't realize you were you were doing something. <laughs> What's all this? Yeah. So, yeah, he, he just he just came up out of the ground with his pickaxe, dug himself up out of the ground. Uh, and then right after that happened, the uh, the horseshoe uh, that Teeks was carrying began to glow. So previously, uh, your character, Solrona, he was swept up by some dusty winds, and all that was left behind was this magic horseshoe uh, that Teeks was just holding on to. Uh, she carried it around on her neck, uh, like a necklace, uh, because she was told that apparently, sometimes, when people buy a certain cursed hat, they get teleported away, and all that's left behind is this horseshoe. So, uh... Yeah. So, yeah... Uh, oh, yeah, go it was, ahead. It was so funny. I I, I really, truly appreciate him, uh, you know, working with me and, and my schedule to, to join in these games so my character can, like, be in and out whenever I need to be out of the game and so you guys can still play. So, you know, I, I appreciate it. But, like, it was hilarious because I popped in and I was just like... But then... Because like I am literally trading places with the um, with the horseshoe, I was like really like I popped them and I was just like really close to Teague. Yeah, you like, <laughs> like on really the same just, like, necklace chain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like super close. They're like, oh hey. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Teague was trying to like cut the necklace off with their spear. Um, I think Bran came along and just cut it with like a dagger because <laughs> they were like yeah. next to each other. <laughs> But then, you know, the whole gang was there, uh, back at full power. So I was a lot more confident about this battle. Uh, apparently, Silverona had been taken to the dusty wasteland of Oregon on a trail yeah, of some the sort. Dusty, <laughs> the dusty wasteland of Oregon. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know him, Silverona is a cowboy wizard. I mean, he, he doesn't actually have a gun because I don't think those rules are out yet. But, no. like, <laughs> but his staff, but, uh, like, his, like, 
shaped like a gun somehow. Yeah, we just I I, I think mechanically it functions like a staff, but like in in in, in I guess de- explaining wise, like in in, in appearance wise, wise, it's like appearance wise. Yeah, it's like it's like just like a gun, <laughs> which I appreciate again for Tim for allowing this kind of nonsense in this setting. Uh, <laughs> but you know. It's good. So I, I Sonora comes back and he tells him how he was, you know, in the wasteland of Oregon, going on some trail. And he came back with uh, <laughs> the rat that he found in Glassstaff's cave uh, was now suddenly yeah. his deputy. Yeah, well, it's, his name is Deputy, and uh, he has a little hat and and badge as well, which is just <laughs> the best thing ever. <laughs> I know. So oh, yeah, the with the with the party back at full power, we went to deal with these orcs. So from. Uh, from Wyvern, we learned that there were seven orcs inside, including their leader. But the thing is, Teeks had specifically asked how many orcs are in your tribe. So that's what she knew. That's what he told her. But she should have asked how many people are in the cave. <laughs> as, <laughs> as we will soon find out. Yeah, so, you know, you we went around around the corner and, you know, this, this cave is huge because Wyverns used to just walk around in this place. So, mm-hmm. you know... And uh, we came around the corner, there was a bunch of orcs, and then it was just kind of like go time. I think there was a little bit of, of hesitancy. It was like, well, do we... I think Cave was scattered out a little bit and just found just a bunch of orcs kind of just chilling, just yelling at each other. Yeah. And, like, so we're like, let's just let's just get the jump on these guys. Let's just go for it. And, like, you know, we all kind of turned the corner and started, like, letting loose, like, spells and arrows and and people chart and all the fighters... Uh, um, Falum and um, uh, Kavo just kind of charged up and um, engaged in melee and stuff like that. So yeah, we had pretty good cool. party positioning this time around. Um, I know because I didn't <laughs> get hurt. But yeah, we had like the melee characters, uh, Falum and Kavo were up front, while Teeks, Silrona, and Bren sort of were. Bren was up front at first because Bren's unarmed melee attacks have been just knocking it out of the park this entire time. But this time he actually yeah. used his bow, which yeah, was impressive. Which was, yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, I, 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 it felt like we're a real party for the first time in a long time. <laughs> like, yeah, pretty much. Because like, last time we were all together, like, like we were split up. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, man, we're all doing it. We're really doing it. Look at all this synergy happening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wish I rolled better on my spells, but whatever. <laughs> Yo, same, man. I, you know, I... I, I and and like eventually as the fight kind of went on um kavo and his immense strength was just like you know i mean he was missing a lot but like when he did hit it was just like that 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 number is way too high for what low level we are like <laughs> yeah that's like a that was a deadly weapon there oh man it was crazy and like surprising how um Fallon was just like literally captain american in it because like Fallon is a is a fighter that fights with a shield yeah. specifically and it kind of felt like Captain America because he's just like downing people left, right, and center. Like it was crazy. Yeah, and, I, um, I really like. Awesome. Um, I really like the character build for Falum. Uh, just that shields focused fighter. Uh, I wouldn't have thought of it, but it's been like it because because last time, um, not last time, a few sessions ago, uh, he was just this wall that was holding down this one doorway, and then now he's on the <laughs> attack and he's just as effective. So. Uh, yeah, just super impressed with that guy. Yes, <laughs> like super impressed with the character. I like everybody's character. Um, you know, all, all the all of us, the two of us, pew pew magic users in the back, just like firing off spells. Yeah, <laughs> like... uh, Falum threw a torch at an orc at one point and caught some oh, of yeah. its hair on which... fire. Oh man, he rolled like max damage on on the the torch, which I thought was awesome. Yeah. Uh, there's so many things, man, like that happened during that fight. That was like a really good session. I was like super jazzed. And like I love I love like I don't know, just like an enjoyment of watching like Cavo miss still a little bit. Like just seeing like, oh my god, I can't believe you missed. Look at that damage number, it's so high. <laughs> like <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was awesome because it was it was like everybody like held their breath every time it was his turn. <laughs> I love the the peanut gallery commentary of like oh oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah and they were because we were watching them and they end up like in the uh, I believe you called it a flank train of like yeah, a line of flank train a line of enemies flanking <laughs> each other that was like it was an orc and then Falum and then another orc and then Cabo and then another orc so <laughs> yeah. like there was all sorts of flanking going on in the middle of that train 
Yeah, and like Kavo got surrounded, all 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 four sides of him was just like surrounded by orcs, and I thought it was hilarious. And it was just like formation complete, like everybody's like <laughs> flanking everybody else. So you know. Yeah, and then we were just there, like cool. slinging spells and arrows. Yeah, I was a little sad though because I burnt one of my scrolls of fireball, well, my only scroll of fireball, and I was like, I think, oh, sorry, I, I think I'm going a little too fast. Like, and then after like some orcs went down and the 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 main boss orc jumped into the fight. Yeah. Um, I think um, then uh, like the main boss orc was was calling to to another orc, yeah, another, somebody like off in off in the the other end of the cave, and they were like talking back to him, be like, I'm coming, I'm coming. Whatever, I'll be there in a second. And then finally, this ogre just shows up, and we're all just like, "Oh shit, here we go!" Like, <laughs> yeah, he, this like, ogre shows up, like carrying these severed heads of the last place the orcs raided, and he just says, "It's playtime." And Kava was like, "I agree." <laughs> yeah, Kava. Kava's so scary. Terrifying. <laughs> so yeah, this ten foot yeah. orc shows up. Ten foot orc in a fifteen foot cave. And again, just I, I think we really had like we really had great positioning in the party. Everyone just came together. Not all our spells worked out the way we wanted them to. I was really uh, I had yeah. high hopes for my tempest surge. I gotta be honest, but at least there was that persistent damage, the little one point of damage every now and then that kind of bothered him. Yeah, and I, I so yeah, I burnt the fireball scroll, and then everybody they rolled like super well, like above twenty. Yeah, that one <laughs> orc like, got like a crit to save. The ogre got hit. Yeah, but the yeah orc just got like just d- d- pirouetted, dodged out of the way of this fireball apparently. I don't know, just did all the backflips to get out of the way. But it was it was I was it was a little sad, but you know what you're gonna do. This is how it is. It's how the dice roll. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, so, you know, we shoot off a couple spells, and then I think the fighter and the barbarian got into a flank, and then it was like, and then I think uh, Cavo did the, dealt the last blow after, you know, they, they took a couple hits. Yeah, a pick right to the ogre's chest. Uh, there was yeah. one orc that was left that just, like, saw how the battle was going, um, saw that the ogre wasn't going to last much longer, so he just tried to run. Um... And I was fully prepared to get in there and stop him, but I mean, like, I was having bad luck with my spells all battle, so I wasn't gonna try to attack him. I was just gonna try to hit him with a, like a Tanglefoot spell or something. Uh, but you, fortunately, had a turn before me, so you just went and you uh, you took this guy right down before he could set off the trap that none of us uh, even noticed. Apparently, there was some oh, sort man. of trap that could have collapsed the tunnel. Like it was hilarious because Tim. Tim, because we're still in initiative order, like, you know, then it was like, um, follow him next. And then Tim's like, Tim's like, follow him, what do you want to do? Do you want to go chase off this dude? And he's like, nah, I'm just going to go loot this body. And then it goes to Bren, and then he goes to the next character. And, and Bren's like, okay, maybe I'll go. And then Tim's like, really? You want to go? It's like, there's all this free loot here. And <laughs> Jimmy's just like, yeah, you're right. What am I doing? I'm going to pick up my arrow. What am I doing? I gotta go pick up these arrows. <laughs> and we're like, oh my god, Tim, you can't just reverse psychology everybody to get this orc to run away. I was like, I was I didn't even I didn't even talk to Tim. I just moved my character over. <laughs> Don't fall for the temptation. I'm not gonna fall for the temptation. Yeah, you're right. So you know, blam, one shot from the the produced flame, and blam, orc just falls. Yeah. And uh, and then Chibi. <laughs> uh, drew a, a picture of, of my character and like all the other ones reacting to him saying something it's like you you yeed your last ha ha <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> just <laughs> yeed your last ha <sighs> oh my gosh I, I hope you could put that picture up um, or because <laughs> yeah. oh it was just a, was... a brilliant very meany picture of it was delicious it was awesome and I love it and definitely you know, Silverona's catchphrase now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> After every battle. <laughs> Whenever he gets a final blow, that's, that's his praise. Um, but yeah, because Teeks was just motivated at that point to, like, not let that orc run into her new friend Wyvern because she was super concerned about him. <laughs> so, like, we got loot, we sorted out, uh, we get some coinage, we get some coinage. Uh, apparently you found some gold at some point a while ago, I guess in Glassstaff's cave, oh, yeah, but you never yeah. told anyone about it, so... Yeah, Hopefully you buy something so that's good I, for the whole party. I have a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Quite a bit of money. <laughs> Door, it's going to be good. <laughs> I hope so. 
Yeah, it'd just be it'd just be giving me more spells. I think I think that's probably when I buy a new a new staff to give me more spell options, so then I could still do the pew pew blast blast stuff. Yeah, more often. I'm still trying to figure out like how effective magic is for my character because I've only got three level one spells and I feel like I can't do anything. I mean, yeah, you're right. Like that's like really hard to use. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I have a, my as a wizard uh, in Pathfinder 2. Uh, that's what that's the game we're playing, by the way. I don't know if we even mentioned it, but we don't play no stinking D and D around here. No five E. Yeah, we're too cool. <laughs> we we're too cool for we're popular cool. thing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just a game that we play. It's just nothing. It's five E. Um, but yeah, so I have three level one spells, and then I can use, I think once per day, I can drain my bonded item to get a spell slot back. So then I could cast a spell, like it's a free action, I get to drain it and get the spell back. So um, so that's, I guess I have four level one spells technically. And then I have, um, I took the feet staff nexus, so I start off with like a staff for free, essentially. So I have the staff the staff lays like a reserve amount of um of uh a stuff that i can i can draw on so you know they i think it's like 10 charges so i have like one charge i have like 10 shots of whatever spell that's in there and uh then it's like cantrips and stuff like that and uh, i think i get one extra thing because of my um my uh uh I think I, my schooling, <laughs> that gets my my your wizard my school. choice of study, or your my wizard schooling, schooling. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get like to learn one more spell. Um, I have it at the ready. So yeah, I don't know. I do have a lot of spells, but that's like all I do. I can't like hit somebody with a stick. <laughs> like I just, yeah, like, that's I why can't. I'm like. <laughs> That's why I think at one point I took out a javelin to use just in case, because like I gotta balance out maybe using more weapons and stuff because I because like I'm basically the team healer. Um, like I've got the medicine skills, yeah. I've got the heal spells, and I'm always taking up like one or two slots for a heal spell, uh, usually two because I gotta be able to like uh, heal people effectively. So I usually want to have at least two, and then save one other first level spell slot for doing some sort of attack spell, um, and then just you know mostly use cantrips for like attacking people. But I don't know, maybe I need to change things up a bit. Uh, use more of those javelins that I have. Yeah, you should, or like maybe use like a bow or something. Like, I think so. You know, it's I think bows are a little bit more uh, economical than like the cantrips because like you can shoot two arrows, but it all depends on like your strength and like all that other factors, right? right. Too, because I was like kind kind of doing the math. It's like if I use the bow, then it would it kind of wouldn't work out as well. I mean, I might get a crit and like get the extra D10 on there, but like. It's just like can't just work better for me, I think, because I'm like a very weak wizard. <laughs> Fair. As much as much bravado as I boast, I'm like. <laughs> I'm I mean, like wizards are fragile. Thin. That's that's the thing. That's their thing. Um, yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. I I don't know. Um, maybe I just need more scrolls or something, or need better yeah, well, feats. Oh to... yeah, totally. You definitely need to to get scrolls and maybe a staff or something if you want to do magic stuff. Because that's like the. The economy right it's always just like every everyone's sword doesn't run out every day right <laughs> so right. it's like you know you gotta you gotta have extra ammo on the belt right extra of course for the <laughs> extra, you know um but yeah so uh your that was the end of the session yeah yeah your <laughs> uh but yeah so that so wasn't we, the end of the session no not at we, all so we, we we divided up the yeah. loot um we we rested in the cave that was smelling of orc and dead orc. Uh, Teeks took watch as it started to rain because she was waiting for Wyvern to come back. Uh, but we did some she healing, does. did some wound treating. I actually uh, failed both of the treat wounds checks that I did. <laughs> uh, one was just a regular fail, but the other one was a critical fail, so I actually ended up doing damage to someone. Yeah, which I think is hilarious that that's, in, that's even an option in the game because it's like if you're already trying to heal somebody they're already in a bad position you just made it worse it's like oh yeah not 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 helpful at all um <laughs> so yeah after that we rested up some more comfortably than others uh and then in the morning we decided to set off for the necromancer just to let him know that the orcs were dealt with uh there was still no sign of wyvern uh at least until we had traveled a few kilometers and then we hear this uh wail of despair in the winds, uh, Wyvern calling for the name of the orc 
the orc leader, the leader of the orc tribe. Oh, oh man. Like, everybody in the team did not care about that. that no, orc, no one cared. <laughs> but Teeks <laughs> is the only one who cared. Teeks is the only one that cared. I thought it was hilarious that <laughs> you were just so sad. And it's just like, well, sorry, man. It's just one orc. But I totally get it. Like, I, Ramon as the player totally gets it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. So, that, like, that was what she was trying to keep him from seeing. She was going to try to, I don't know, get him out of there or something. But, uh, yeah, with her gone, and he just sees all of his tribe slaughtered, including the leader. And I don't know what's going to happen to him. Um, I made a joke about him being, like, some sort of orc Batman. But, um, I don't know. I, I, I have no idea what's going to happen with that guy. I'm really glad Tim let me just pull on that thread as far as I as far as I as far as I went because it was really really ridiculous and pointless and had nothing to do with anything that was going on but you know I'm just I'm just glad he let me do that I, I don't know what he's gonna yeah, do yeah. with it if, or if he's gonna over show up again or anything like that but I just even it's even if dark and stormy night you see on the rooftops just orc <laughs> <laughs> he's trying his hardest to be stealthy even though he's like seven feet tall yeah, yeah, it's just like flash of lightning. This is just, just this orc with a cape and cowl, <laughs> this wall of muscle. <laughs> yeah, like even even if that session is the only time Wyvern is a character, um, I just I had so much fun with that. Um, so yeah, I, I was really glad for the time I had with that character. Uh, but then yeah, yeah, we arrive at the necromancer, who has taken up residence in this tower ruin that happens to have a well that people need. So I was hoping, and Teeks was hoping that, you know, hey, since we've dealt with the orcs, maybe you'll let people use the well for a bit and then you can finish your stuff. He was having none of that. Yeah, he was like, get out, of, get off of my, get off of my uh, uh, excavation site, right? Get off like... my lawn. <laughs> so this, yeah, this was your lawn. first time meeting this character. Um, yeah. <laughs> this absolute jerk of a wizard. I don't know. What did you think about this character? Because we ended up, we did have a longer conversation with him in the previous session. Mm -hmm. So imagine that, but like turned up to 11 because Silrona at least got a smidge of respect from this guy. We got none. Yeah. 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 Cause, cause like, you know, wizard, wizard bros are like, oh yes, I see that you're also a giga brain. Like <laughs> <laughs> a know. man of culture, um, a man of culture. Right. You know, um, so yeah, like I, I mean, I like the character. I mean, he was diff I know that the type of character he is, he's kind of like an asshole, right? Yeah. He just is, and he has like an army of undead, and he's like, no, I'm not gonna listen to you. I'll stop killing my my workers, like, right? I'm I'm a wizard. I'll just blow you up with a fireball or something. Like, go away, like, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And I I get it, because <laughs> you know wizard wizard with fireball equals like a short fuse and it's like i i don't think i have patience with this just blow them up exactly. right um but yeah no it was cool it's cool that like i was able to impress him with some arcane knowledge and get him a little bit you know butter him up a little bit because teagues wanted to try to uh because you know we told we told him we dealt with the orcs and then it's like well who gives a shit <laughs> yeah because he still wanted that stuff from the banshee he still wanted the stuff from the excavation site so it's like I'm not gonna give up my land just because you. Uh, I was I, I was having flashbacks to um, and we've talked about this a bunch of times in our in your other campaign, the um, Path of Anion campaign. Uh, Macy's yeah. bad day. Uh, oh yeah, my character Macy, <laughs> um, having been made sort of like the party leader, um, a lot of the um, responsibility fell on her. So when bad stuff happened, it kind of looked, it reflected badly on her. And there was just like one particular day where everything went wrong. And then she ended up disappointing <laughs> her, uh, her father figure that she was really looking up to. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, you know, yeah, so T we're all like, good job, Teeks, now he's mad. <laughs> yeah, so Teeks, having, having lost the trust of Wyvern, um, and, like, not being able to reconnect with her new friend, um, had now also pissed off this Necromancer, and not ended up making any sort of deal to allow people to use the well. <laughs> so, I was like, oh no, this is what her bad day looks like. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, so, but but good thing your good old buddy Solrona is back from the Oregon Trail to assist. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, so we, we I, you know, I came in there with the, the arcane knowledge and you know, we had a little bit of a conversation uh, about, like, you know, uh, like, you know, wizard to wizard about what's going on here and how, like, I, how, like, he's doing a good job and stuff like that. Because, you know, you have to play to people's egos, exactly. right? Course, like, obviously, this done. dude, this dude has no altruistic thing other than like i'm gonna dig up whatever's here and everyone's gonna think i'm really cool for it and i was like don't worry man i get you but you can't block up the well and then um uh what was it and th and then we're like okay let me go see that document because he had like documents yeah uh, he had some sort of contract about... uh with regards yeah. to the ownership of the land in the area yeah, so he, he got us to, to um, oh, he, he allowed me to look at it, uh, Sorona to look at it. So, uh, you know, and after reading it, it, it turned out that he actually didn't own the rights to excavate at the, the ruins. He only owned the rights to, I don't know, do whatever he wants in a kilometer of the ruins. Yeah, like the land <laughs> around like a... the ruin, but not the ruin yeah. and the well itself. Which I was like, this is this is a really weird document. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I was like, oh, okay, that's like a weird loophole, I guess. But I guess he's just breaking the law. <laughs> like, yeah, like he's which not, we he's couldn't just... prove because none of us were able to sort of charm him in a way that allowed us to, to take get a, look a good look at the document, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's just like, wait a minute here. And then you know, so we're like, okay, let's try. We tried. Let's try one more time to get this dude to leave, right? Because really, we want, like, I don't want a necromancer anywhere near the townspeople. To be honest with you, no. <laughs> like, they're they already have dead people working for him, so you know, let's just let's just not let anything bad happen, you know. So uh, we went in there, and and then Tim's like, well, okay, you got to roll diplomacy, or, or you got to convince him, right? Give me a roll. And I was like, I was like, wait a minute, I don't have anything diplomacy. Yeah. But my rat does. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, like, I thought I was just going to be, like, because Teeks was there at the time, so I was like, okay, well, I'll assist, I'll say that we'll also do the other thing that he wants us to do with the Banshee, so I thought, I'll just give you a plus two, and then you'll make your roll, and maybe we'll get lucky, but, turns out, you had your familiar, which had some skills in diplomacy, as well as the ability to talk. Yeah, which I thought was hilarious, because you only get, like, two, like, the, the familiar stuff gets two familiar feats, right? Mm. One of them was speech, and I was like, okay, it'd be kind of cool if the mouse could talk, or a rat or whatever could talk. And I was like, okay, cool, cool, right? And then it, then there was another thing, skilled. It's like, oh, I can choose a skill that's not, uh, you know, not, uh, uh, like, I think stealth or athletics or acrobatics or something, right? So it's like, oh, okay, I'll just choose, hmm, what would be useful? I think diplomacy would be pretty funny. So, not not realizing that I would use like I just recently leveled up the character right because I have I, I missed a lot of sessions. Yeah. Not that I would you know ever like use it right away right, but immediately I was like, wait, deputy can talk. <laughs> deputy has more diplomacy than me. I'm gonna let deputy take it over. And this little rat just like like you know came out of my pocket and just like sat on top of my hat and was just like talking talking legalese <laughs> to this dude to, to, to convince him to leave so yeah because tim had specifically <laughs> asked you to do the voice for the rat and i thought you were just gonna go with like the high pitch mickey mouse or whatever i didn't expect you to do the well i'm just a simple southern rat lawyer kind of voice <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well i didn't know i, I couldn't i couldn't it, i couldn't like imagine the voice in my head's like I, I, it wasn't coming out so i was just like let's just do like a like a southern accent and just like make this little mouse be like super serious because <laughs> you know it's trying to also make it funny right it's like i don't know how to do this to make this funny so let's just give the voice of the mouse like a regular voice like <laughs> that absolutely floored me because uh, it was not remotely what i thought you were gonna go with i thought you were gonna do something else and then you went with that and, uh, I deplore you, <laughs> sir. <laughs> like the foghorn leghorn. I see, I see. I, I don't know. I don't know where you pulled that voice from. I, because I don't think I've ever heard you do that. Um, no, I'm terrible. I'm terrible with voices. Like, I oh, sure, the, sure. I, but I, I mean, <laughs> it's still funny. Because I was thinking of like your yeah. French voice uh, that you've done before. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shitty, shitty Quebecois. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry for anybody who's listening. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm hoping because it's terrible, people won't be offended. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
if I could do better, I would. Like, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's just uh, you, you, yeah, you, no, this, you just this, had <laughs> deputy like explain regal... the contract back to this guy. Yeah, yeah, this regal southern rat who can you know just talk to him about the finites of this contract and how like you know we could just go back to Neverwinter and tell tell everybody what you're doing up here and it's, you can't cover up the evidence. You're like doing an excavation, right? Mm-hmm. So like you know. And and then I don't know. Tim was satisfied with that. So then and then, then all, then he's like, "All right, man, you did it. Make the roll." And then, uh, so, so yeah. And then, um, <laughs> so your 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 uh, your de- deputies, uh, your rat's persuasion was apparently plus six. So you you made your roll d twenty plus six, and you rolled <laughs> you rolled a crit. You rolled a natural twenty. <laughs> A roll of nat twenty, like the gods are like, yes, <laughs> this this rat is Ace Attorney, <laughs> like <laughs> Ace Attorney rat at law. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man, like it was hilarious. I can't believe it. It was like Tim's like, I'm pretty sure because I had to type it into roll twenty. It yeah, was like, it was like, there's no way. Stop bullshit. You just typed in twenty. <laughs> I'm like, <Nope>. nah, man, <laughs> I rolled it. And then, so he's like, he's like, you know, he did the voice, and uh, I'm thoroughly pleased. So I guess he'll just after you, after you guys come back from the banshee, get him the information he's looking for, then he'll just pack up and leave because you know your this rat was so convincing. <laughs> oh man, I, I that was probably the most I've laughed in a session for a while. Yeah, it was a hilarious session. I had tons of fun. Seeing that crit, I I don't know. Everything that happened in that session between the wyvern and the rat was just uh, hilarious and brilliant to me. Uh, I thought that was a great... I thought it was just great. A ton of fun. Um, And yeah, just really glad that we were able to, like... We were able to come at this problem again. The problem of this necromancer in this area. Who we had not been able to convince of anything, basically. And because you've got new people here, uh, Calvo being really awesome and great at digging, and then Silrona being very arcane and wise, and then having having deputy nearby, uh, we were just able to take another shot at it, and then you know had different results. No, it was hilarious. I didn't. I didn't even. Oh my god, deputy man, he's the best. (laughs) Yeah, like Teeks, because Teeks was right next to Silrona when that happened. Teeks is like. You gotta watch out for Deputy now, because Teeks is just gonna, like... <laughs> Teeks is gonna bring him all sorts of snacks and stuff. She is gonna want to, like, cuddle the hell out of that rat. I mean, I like the idea that Deputy's just getting fat, because Teeks keeps feeding him. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I describe Deputy, he's just, like a, he's just, like, a little bit chunkier. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, my pocket's kind of heavy these days. <laughs> This this, this chunky southern lawyer rat named Deputy. (laughs) It is just pure joy, man. Yeah, and that's like that's like one of the the things I love about uh, like I don't know like compared to some of the other uh, games I'm like playing in, it's uh, there's just so much intensity all the time and like people are dying and like I just kind of like the sometimes having just like a funny session where it's like. You know, some goofy shit happened, and we, get to, we all get to laugh at it. Yes, <laughs> like, exactly. Like, where, like, what else? Where else can you get this sort of thing, though? Is what I'm thinking. Like, where? What other game can you play? What other story can you engage with, where you can just have something, ran, like random and absurd happen, Damn. and it's just like that's a part of the story now. It's a part of the narrative now. Going forward, you're gonna have a rat with that voice or going forward there's gonna be a random orc out there with the name of Wyvern or like <laughs> like your like your your rat character has now changed the course <laughs> of this story because he's convinced uh this necromancer to allow people to use the well, something we weren't really able to do. Uh I don't know I don't know how like uh my familiar top no jutsu uh <laughs> the, the necromancy was no business listening to this rat but could not disargue with it <laughs> like he couldn't he couldn't, couldn't out argue it so you know i'm good i'm excited to see uh if i can keep up the legendary presence of deputy uh throughout the the rest of this campaign 
um, you know, uh, I think I've, I've we've invented a, another lovable character. <laughs> And uh, yeah, man, no, it's cool. And that's the thing too, right? Like I, the, the bringing it back to the tip of the week, like, let your players just kind of do stuff, like get a little wacky, like let them bring shit up and be like, I'm pretty sure that my mouse, my my brat can can do it better than I can. Let me let let's let's make it happen. Yeah, you know, and then the dice make it happen. You know. Yeah, of course, it Those is players. the um, just, just just the freedom to move and be absurd uh, in this space is just, I think, one of the best parts of it. Uh, I don't. I, I. You can't. I don't know. I can't think of anything that tops this. I can't think of anything else where I'm like, where where this sort of thing could have happened. Um, just, yeah. Just the power of these tabletop RPG games. Uh, you know, let's get the flow, know, get the dice going, the improv, the funniness. It's all good, man. And that's that's why we like this stuff, and that's why more people should be in this hobby. And I'm, I'm always excited when I, I get more people to, to join it, and I'm even more excited to when when they decide to to run their own games because you know now forever Tim's in Tim's whether or not Tim plays with us ever again, he will always have deputy in his heart. Like <laughs> yes, you know, like moving forward, right? Like years from now, like he'll never forget deputy <laughs> in that know, one moment because it was so ridiculous, <laughs> right? But yeah, um, another fun session, another great one. Uh, hopefully, I'll have that character art up, or if Chibi wants to draw like a better version of it, <laughs> then I'll wait. Um, but yeah, that uh, it was just really well done. I'm really glad we did all that. Uh, we've got a bit more time in the podcast. I did want to talk about some other subjects. Um, I, this, this recently came to mind for me, uh, the subject of retconning something. Um, basically making a retroactive change uh, within something that's already happened, either within a narrative or within like a specific battle moment or something like that. Uh, just because I, I had a moment fairly recently where um, a player could have done something and they didn't do it at the time. And it kind of felt a bit on me because it was like a new thing that I had just introduced. So it was like, okay, we can go back, like, because it, it wasn't too far after, so it was just like, okay, we can go back a turn and we can retroactively fix it. Well, I guess I could, I guess I could just say what it is. Uh, we had started using... <laughs> I don't know why I'm being vague you're on just, this. You're just like, oh, they'll they'll find out. Oh, no, the, the D&D police will show up and <laughs> tell me I did it. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Um, so we had just started using uh, hero points in a Pathfinder 2e game. And hero points, you can use them... Um, one for an instant recovery if you use all of them, but you could also use them for a reroll if you spend one. So um, this was back in the Drake fight that I described earlier, uh, where the players yeah. were confronted by some Drakes as well as like a pack of wolves. Uh, but among the wolves was one that a player had already interacted with and helped out because uh, it was injured. So this person rolls a diplomacy check on the wolves uh, because they were Jew, they could talk to the wolves. So they roll a diplomacy check. Um, I had lowered the DC of the check because one of the wolves there was the one that was injured before, uh, but it wasn't the leader of the pack or anything like that. But it was just like, I made the check a little bit easier uh, just so you don't have to fight on two fronts. Uh, so they rolled the check and they had failed that check. So I was having the, uh, basically what was going on was that the wolves were there, the drake was there, the wolves were attacking the players and the, like it was, it was like a three-way thing. Um, but as, as we were starting to do that, um, you would just, we just realized, oh, we, she could have used that, um, she could have used that hero point for a reroll. So I was like, I don't think I had done much of the damage or anything yet for the wolves. Cause I think yeah, maybe yeah. I had done like a couple attacks at most. Uh, but yeah. yeah, it was just a realization that, oh, well, you could have done something to fix this. And if it was a, if it was like a different situation, if it was like, uh, oh, I forgot how my spell worked or something like that, then I would have been like, okay, well, when we come around next time, you can do it differently. Uh, but because we sort of recently introduced using that mechanic um, to sort of compensate for how much death has been in that game, um, I sort of felt like <laughs> <laughs> the bodies are just piling up. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta do something. <laughs> Look, none of them are on purpose, but <laughs> but sort of to compensate for how much death has been in that game, we sort of used that mechanic very recently. So to me, it was like, yeah, it's that's that's fair. Like I probably could have reminded if I had remembered I could have said something like oh now, now that we're using this thing for the first time you probably could have used it here so I didn't mind uh, reversing in that situation um, 
just to allow them to actually like get some use out of these things. Because uh, I, you know, I, I forget them sometimes. Because what I used to do in that game was I would give them like small bonus XP for certain moments, uh, certain like fun moments and stuff like that. Um, but then we started using hero points instead. So yeah. Uh, I felt like it was partially on me for not reminding them of this thing, and it wasn't too bad to go back, it wasn't too difficult. So we just rolled back a bit, uh, they spent a point, they re-rolled the check, they did well, so they were able to get rid of the wolves so they could all focus on the wyvern. Um, and that was the same That was the same battle where someone had summoned a sprite and then exploded the sprite, so... <laughs> yeah. Kinda glad and, that happened. Like, I, well, I mean, I think it was... I think it was gonna be cool, right? <laughs> like, right. like I'm always, I'm always cool with retconning for like the coolness sake. It's like, wait, wait, wait. I think I can make this silly thing work that we all wanted to work anyway. Yeah. Even you, the DM, right? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you, you would have been totally awesome. Like, yeah. And then you know, your pal with the wolf because you did all these cool things with wolves, and it's like they'll leave you alone and maybe help you fight the drakes or something. You know, like because. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, maybe well, it was a crit on that check, but it was, it was not. So they were like, yeah, we just won't fight you, but we're gonna leave. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't, I think retconning is great. I mean, honestly, I often just lie to my players, like straight up, if they forget about something, or like, or like when we used to play IRL, like I used to just roll behind a screen. Sometimes I would just be like, oh, I miss, or oh, sometimes I hit because you know it's dramatic, right? I'm a, uh, but. You know, I, I used to do all that stuff, and like I think that like retconning something to make the like the narrative and the experience and everybody's like you know happy like enjoyment of the game better. Like yeah, man, go for it. Like I mess stuff up all the time, and you know, other than Calvin taking detailed notes, sometimes I can't get away with stuff. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I don't know. Do you have any like specific like plot stuff or any? momentary game stuff that you can think of for like so i mean tons of times i think in the Ineon game there was one point in the dungeon because i i was kind of like running a um i was running a dungeon out of an adventure path uh, rise of the rune lords i was running a dungeon out of there and then i forgot because like there was a point in rise of the Ruins where we we're supposed to get a key <laughs> and i just because obviously i'm just running the dungeon you guys don't have that key so you guys are literally stuck behind like a, an invisible door right because right. you guys didn't have the key so i was like oh shit. uh i don't know how i'm gonna navigate you guys around this i'm just gonna say like hey uh you character over there uh you actually have this thing that will open up this door because i was just like it, it wasn't important right and it was it was like literally the door to the epic boss battle that like i took you know, an hour to, to put together and choreograph and figure out the thing that I actually wanted to do, yeah. the thing that everybody else wanted to do. It was stuck behind this door that I forgot about. So I was just like, forget it. <laughs> yeah, right? let's get to the cool thing. You know, I'll retcon that, yes, you have the key because you found it before and now it just works and you guys can go move on. I, I think retcon and stuff to just keep the plot moving is pretty good too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of, retconning is just kind of like, you know, story adjustment in front of the players because obviously like, you all on the back end, you just kind of move stuff around the plot if they just decide to like ignore something, right? right. Ignore an encounter, ignore like an enemy type or something that like you're just like, oh, I guess I'll just use this later, right? Or like, oh, that's a good idea from the players like having like, you know, they, they said something, you're like, oh yeah, that makes total sense. So now you move up whatever piece you had from one side branch and you just move it up so they encountered it, right? Like you know you lay that piece of track in front of them mm -hmm. right yeah so uh i'm trying to i'm trying to think of like a, a a thing that i retconned like recently but uh oh yeah i i think i i kind of i i will retcon this in uh in a second in a second when i when we stream lancer again because you guys still have to do your downtime but um uh when um like the the nhp that you guys recovered right before I was like, I think this NHP is going to be kind of like nebulous and not really going to be able to help. And then we're like, okay, maybe now it's the ship's NHP. And then I'm like, mate, no, nah, we should just have this NHP just be a thing that you guys can use, right? So I decided what kind of NHP it was. So now you guys can just like have it as a resource. So you guys can, one of you guys can put it into, you know, their mech and use it, right? Ooh. So, you know, stuff like that. It's like, I'm always trying to like, 
retcon stuff to be usable for you people. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd rather not something just be like, like sitting there and not not just like a an item you guys can use to further your goals. Uh, I, I I don't know. It's just wasted wasted story space that you can just you know make into something. I'd rather just make into something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think as long as you, I mean. Some some retcons happen in front of the player. Some happen behind the screen, and that's just stuff you have to do adjust and communicate differently. But I think when it comes to having to change something uh, in front of the players, like putting that key in their pocket or just rolling back a combat a few turns, uh, doing a bit of a rewind, um, I think it's always important just to like communicate clearly and openly. Oh, uh, there's yeah. something that needs to change here because either yeah, yeah. someone either someone something was forgotten or something got messed up. Or it'd just be more interesting if it happened this way. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, 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 like, again, this really depends on your group. Uh, again, we've been very fortunate. I mean, like, I feel like I've been, been very fortunate. I'm sure you might feel the same way uh, in terms of who we've played these games with. Um, yeah, Because we, we, we've played in groups where, like, I, I can't think of a single group I've played in where I wouldn't feel comfortable saying, oh, well, I've messed something up. I need to go back and change something. Um, even if it was something that inconvenienced the players in a way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, retconning and DMing go hand in hand sometimes. Yeah. Uh, the classic retcon, in my opinion, is like, hey, your your backpacks feel a little bit heavier. Oh, you know, look inside of it. And it's, oh, look, look at these health potions that I put here because obviously <laughs> I you want were the not story prepared. to continue. <laughs> yeah, but you were not prepared. Right. <laughs> and then I understand, too, it's like, uh, I mean, sometimes i'm like let the dice kind of speak for itself and that's like what it is like that where the dice land on that's where it lays but other times i'm like nah man these dice are stupid like <laughs> i don't want to leave it up to chance i'll just tell you what happens no, tons of times of i just do that <laughs> tons of times i'm just like uh forget it i'll just uh i'll just tell you what happens like you don't have to roll it or like i don't even roll with like i'll, I'll just go with like a 50 50 chance like a flat check i'm just like if you just roll above 10 it happens and if it doesn't like with the net yeah, i was just like i don't want to make an attack roll just like you know you this whole situation is kind of looney tunes anyway like <laughs> um the net being uh the demon catching net that we bought and ended up using on a boss character <laughs> yeah in the pirate campaign <laughs> well you guys caught you guys like decided it i mean even that like again bringing it back to the dm tip of the, the week you know let your players make shit up my my wife and their brilliance is like we're going into a demon forest let me make a demon catching net right so uh, i i think i think it was brilliant so and, and like i didn't really have rules for it i just have like i had like one liners it was like not even the one liners it was like demon catching net and then on like a walk with my wife i was like so what do you think it does and it's just like I don't know it just kind of catches demons and i was like i guess that makes sense because like there's tons of other ways to catch demons like magic circles and stuff so i'm like yeah i guess it's just kind of like a really powerful artifact level thing where it just says it just catches one demon like no matter what it just can catch a demon no matter what the type no matter how you know wise it is or how old it is or how powerful it is it's just you throw this net on it and it 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 just has to be in the net yeah <laughs> like it doesn't stop it from attacking you or casting spells, but I guess it's just kind of tied down at the moment. It's, it's kind of at least. Yeah, right? And I was like, yeah, that's not that bad. Who cares? Like, right? And then I was like, well, you know, at the time, I think that, you know, making a ranged attack with a thing that you're not used to making a ranged attack with and making it like an improvised attack, I was like, that's too many numbers. Like, 50 50. <laughs> like, roll, roll above a 10. <laughs> And you did it <laughs> because the, the demon that's already that powerful anyway. So, you know, I'll just bake into the rules that like there's a 50% chance that if you throw this net at a demon, it'll catch it. No matter what the AC is, no matter how big it is, like it could be like way smaller than the demon. But if that thing lands on it, it's like it's 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 like immobilized, like period. Yeah. And Which I, I thought was hilarious. I'm really glad that turned out as dramatically as it did. Because it took us like four or five tries to actually land the thing. Oh my god. You guys like sucked at throwing that thing. And it was like, it was so funny because I kept putting the, every time you guys missed, I put the, whoever last uh, threw it on the opposite side, whatever that square is, it's like, that's where the net is. So someone had to run around the demon lady, grab it, then toss it, and then miss. <laughs> it was just like. <laughs> just that back and forth was. But, 
I don't know. Back and forth, man. It was awesome. It was brilliant. I don't even know. I don't even remember who tossed it on there uh, at the end, but it was it was just like, ah, this Finally. damn net. I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, everybody just eruption like, yeah, we did it at the table. It was it was awesome. Yeah. Those moments are and, the best. Uh, and yeah, if you got to change something yeah. so that you can have those cool moments, then just, you know, be open and communicate with your players, be open and honest with them. And uh, if they don't understand, then there's probably other issues in your group, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, no, it was good. And uh, yeah, uh, retconning, don't be afraid to do it. It's it's a good idea sometimes. I mean, it's like one of those one of those things in your DM tool kit that, you know, you can imp- uh, deploy and um, improve your game for sure. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, I think that's all we can. I think that's all we've got on this topic for now. Uh, and we are at our time. <laughs> uh, you know, I like to have these episodes be about an hour, just because that feels like what a podcast should be to me. I don't know if that makes sense <laughs> to anyone, but I feel like it should be at least an hour. <laughs> well, I mean. You tell us. <laughs> do you want things shorter? Do you want things longer? Do you want just like a mega podcast where it's just like a movie like? <laughs> yeah, we can just keep talking for three hours. Let's re- release oh, yeah, the so Snyder we... Cut of the uh, yeah <laughs> of our podcast <laughs> before our podcast. I, I have actually considered doing just like um, clips of like fun bits and conversations that we've had. Uh, I don't know, if people were into that, uh, maybe drop a comment below if you want to see something like that. And of course, again, drop a comment on any sort of... If you are a new GM, or if you're thinking about GMing, and you have like that one specific roadblock that you can't uh, you can't get over, that one question you want an answer to, uh, just drop it in the comment section below, uh, and we'll check it out. Maybe do an episode on it. Or you can communicate with us over on Twitter, at WinWithDice, uh, as well as Facebook at WinWithDice page. And on our website... Uh, womenwithdice.ca those are all the places you can you know potentially reach the videos with budgets and stuff right and if you would like to catch uh, more of us and uh, catch our Lancer streams that we stream on our our YouTube channel um, uh, click that subscribe button hit that bell so you know when we're going live or you know when we uh, uh, put out another video um and uh yeah you know drop us a like support the channel like it's the only way we're gonna grow (laughs) exactly (laughs) share it with your friends that we super appreciate we really do um i also want to give some shout outs to some friends of the show uh first off uh ukuwa station uh over on twitter another big fan of lancer uh they recently started a youtube channel where they're uploading some videos of their uh lancer games so i want to drop a link to that in the comment section just so people can go check that out um, as well, of course, we've got to give a shout out to USP, the Untold Stories Project, uh, where mm-hmm. I've been on there playing Fallout every Wednesday. Um, last week was the last episode of that series. Uh, it was very, uh, it was very awesome. Um, we, we there were some robot pirates involved. <laughs> <We're just. laughs> so it's always a good time when that happens. Exactly. <laughs> well, you, you put robot pirates in anything, it's going to be great. Uh, and then the DM just like broke my character in the season finale so season two version of my character is going to be way different because he he had some chill uh now he's going to have none <laughs> <laughs> well here that folks you got you gotta look forward to that so go check out um until stories yeah go check them out i'm also there playing uh Muse and masterminds on mondays um hopefully i will be on there for a very long time by the time this comes out i will have been on there for a second time but I don't know if that's going to complete that arc. Um, I want to be on there so I can be very angsty because <laughs> it, was, it was really fun to just go there and like throw a wrench in the thing and just make it do say random things that made everyone like have sad feels. No. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so hopefully you'll see more of me doing that. They've got me on there playing an archer character. And, you know, I love Archer. I mean, Archer characters are my favorite. So I've been making, like, a bunch of trick arrows. I wrote down, like, two dozen ideas for arrows. So hopefully they have me on the show for a while. <laughs> this arrow ch- turns into a fist. <laughs> <laughs> you joke, but that's I... Always my, that's always my favorite trick arrow of all time. It's the boxing glove it's arrow. Like, it's The boxing glove comes out. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> yeah, no, I have one. <laughs> 
so good. You should, you should just have a an arrow that just unfolds into a gun. <laughs> it just it just shoots somebody before it hits them. Like, <laughs> I mean, there is my arrow that shoots other arrows. But <laughs> that, that would be the best. So yeah, it's, it's like a, it's just a hand with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Bang! <laughs> you just hold the arrow shaft. It's gonna. Kind of, Oh man, so yeah, if you want to see me use any of those zany arrows, uh, be sure to check out USB on Mondays, uh, where you can see me, and also check out their, their other shows, um, I think they're still playing Werewolf on Tuesday by the time this goes up, and they're playing Call of Cthulhu the Wednesday this episode's going up, so you know, be sure to check them out, uh, really great bunch of people over there who have the same sort of mission statement as us, is, which is to show off some games that uh, don't usually get enough attention. Although they focus on it more, we just play Lancer occasionally. <laughs> well, uh, no one's heard of Pathfinder. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, that, that might be changing in the future, uh, <laughs> but we'll we'll see once we get true. some time to really kind of uh, stream some more shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So definitely, just stick around the channel. Keep checking us out if you want to see more of what we can do in the future. We have some plans for some things that uh, we can't wait to share with all of you. Uh, and I think that's about it for our outro. I don't know. Oh, Ramon, do you yet, think there's man. anything else? We're not. Yeah, man. You're not. What, what am I missing here? What, what's, what, what should be... <laughs> Calvin, we play this game every episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I know exactly what I'm forgetting. I forgot to tell everybody out there to keep on winning with dice. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> see you guys.